Welcome back to another episode of Research Design Build. In today's episode, we're talking about saw stop saws and specifically how you can on saw stop saws by buying them used, but buying them as three phase. If you're shopping for a used saw stop saw, a lot of the units that you'll see come up available are all going to be three phase. Now, this is great for you if you're a little bit resourceful because that's going to drive down the price substantially. The reason that drives down the price substantially is that the businesses that are buying these saws that have three phase power are not going to be buying used equipment. They're going to be looking at buying new. So on the used market, three phase equipment are going into new startup shops that might have three phase. And that's about it. So the prices of those drop substantially on the resale market. The two-phase equipment, however, holds its value very, very well because it is going into hobbyist shops and there's more and more hobbyists, including myself, that are looking to get into the safety that's inherent with a soft stop saw. A lot of people are daunted by three-phase equipment in their shop, but saw stop makes it really, really easy. Their customer service is beyond anything that I've seen. They actually will tell you exactly how to swap your saw from three-phase to single phase. You can go from that five horsepower three phase saw, like what I was able to purchase here, into a five horsepower two phase 220 volt saw, all with parts right off the shelf from SawStop. Now you can go directly to SawStop and buy the parts from their website, or you can work through your local dealer. I would suggest working through your local dealer because chances are if you can get in on one of their orders that they're already ordering from SawStop for new saws for their store, they'll actually get their shipping included in their order and so you can save on that shipping cost, especially for folks like myself that are north of the border. All you need to do is once you get your three phase saw is email saw stop with your serial number. Based off that serial number, they'll be able to tell you the parts that are required to make that swap. For myself, there are two parts that I needed. One was the motor itself and secondly was the starter. Now the starter and control box also goes into some of the safety equipment and that sort of thing. So when you swap that out, you're ensured that all the safety features and the reason you bought the saw are going to work. There are ways to use VFDs and three phase power converters, rotary phase converters. There are lots of ways to get three phase into your shop. However, we're looking at trying to get all of these safety features to work and are they gonna work 100% properly 100% of the time using one of those other ways to get three phase into your shop and kind of tricking the saw into thinking that you have true three phase power. I wasn't really willing to take the risk on that. I wasn't going to wire it up with a uh, VFD or with a rotary phase converter and then, you know, test it with a hot dog to make sure it was all working. I wasn't interested in doing that. I was interested in making sure that I got the parts correct. I got it done correctly and it was fully converted so that I was I could remain safe and have that peace of mind. In terms of cost, I don't feel that there's a significant difference between going through SawStop and getting all of the right parts versus doing a VFD. A VFD I could probably purchase for this unit for, you know, 250 to maybe $500 in that range, depending on whether you wanted a made in China VFD or if you're looking for a, you know, a more European or North American high quality VFD, you'd be kind of in that, uh, that probably price range. And you could probably get this up and working reasonably well. However, for you know, just under $1,000, depending on your, if you're north of the border or south of the border, you can get a brand new motor and brand new starter from saw stop all the plugs all terminated, all ready to go, pulleys mounted on the motor, just a bolt-in, plug-in affair, and you've got a fully converted saw. And you've got a motor with zero miles on it, you got a starter with zero miles on it. So I think, you know, if you're looking at this from a long-term investment standpoint, I think that's probably the safest and best way to go. We've got the old three-phase motor here that we have to remove. And we've also got in the bottom, we've got the starter and control box. So first things first, I'm gonna get rid of the dust hose here and buy myself a little bit of room. Now 
Next up is removing the two door safety switches. So these have to be depressed in order for the saw to start. And it's a seven millimeter bolt on the back. And we'll remove those. The next door switch is located right here next to your power shutoff. So now that we have both uh, door switches disconnected, next we're going to disconnect the on off switch for the machine. And so there's a bunch of screws around here that I'm going to remove, and then we should be able to unplug the connection. This is the power cord that is running in from the starter. And this is what we're looking to disconnect. This one we're gonna leave and this one goes up and to all of the safety systems. With the little clip here removed, we can then unplug this guy and we're ready to go. So the safety disconnect kind of stumbled me for a few minutes. Really there's two tabs on each side and, and if you go through kind of the, the side of the plastic here with a screwdriver and pry you'll be able to disconnect those and then this pulls straight out. You got sort of two tabs here on the front and back of the machine that you need to disconnect and then it'll pull straight off and then you've got the little card that says on off and behind that you got four screws that are holding the whole contraption on so i couldn't find these screws anywhere i was looking all over that's where they are we've got everything disconnected all we've got left is the motor itself so if you do turn the saw up to a 45 degree angle then you've got pretty decent access to the electrical connections Now with all the zip ties removed, we can now pull out everything, the starter and the power disconnect switch. The motor is still in the 45 degree position. I'm going to loosen the bolts for the motor. I'm not going to take them all the way out because you don't want to actually drop the motor out at this point. These are 19 millimeter bolts and nuts and a three quarter inch imperial will also work. At the back side here, you'll have to lift up on the motor and then you can get the belt off of the pulley here. I've got it down at zero degrees and so I can't quite get the belt completely off this pulley. Tilting the saw back up to 45, we'll be able to get this belt out of here. We've got a combination of 2x10s, 2x6s, and 2x4s, just random scrap laying around, sitting in here and underneath the motor. I did have to raise the motor just ever so slightly to get that fourth 2x4 in there, and now the motor is resting completely on the wood. So we'll be able to take out these two bolts for the motor, and we should be able to then raise the saw up which will give us clearance to pull the motor out of the mounts.
All right, so surprisingly easy to get that out. Let's see how heavy this thing is to slide out of here. All right, not bad. You don't want to damage the brand new motor. All right. Whew. I'll lower it down and get it lined up. Just about there. So the uh, the bolt that goes into the tensioning side does have a little detent in it, uh, so that when you are tightening it, it locks into this and it's it's not spinning. You don't need to use a uh, a wrench on both sides. Now the instructions for swapping the motor do actually suggest that you swap the place of the bolt. So you're putting it in the other way so that the nuts are available on the belt side rather than the back side of the motor. Probably a revision that they did at some point. So depending on the age of your saw, maybe they're one way, maybe they're the other. But uh, that way you can check the tension and as well do up the nut for the tension mechanism at the same time. And now that we got the two bolts in, let's uh, raise this guy up. Pull out that wood. With the two motor bolts tight, what I used here was the wrench for the blade change. And just got it in here. in between the uh, sort of the upper frame and the motor, push down on that to tighten or to, to tension and then tighten up this guy here. They don't have like a really exact spec for how tight to get it, but it is supposed to sort of make a bit of a sound there when you're doing it. So that's kind of how tight I've got it. And that was similar to how tight it was when I got it as well. So One thing that wasn't uh, super clear with the instructions from SawStop, because basically the SawStop instructions are basically to replace like with like. So this is the safety disconnect. And what wasn't super clear is sort of which of these 12 gauge wires would go to the safety disconnect and which would go to the motor. It was somewhat intuitive because the one end had grommets on it, um, basically crimped on to go into the safety disconnect. And then the other one just had a ring terminal on the ground wire and then we're ready for morettes for the the motor so that's what i figured was the case but just to double check i did open this up and you can tell on the contactor this is sort of the input side so power coming in power going out and then into the thermal overload switch here there is a reset button so uh, that isn't shown on the outside of the case so that's interesting to see if, if you do have an issue in the future and you can't get power there is a reset button in here and then this is where all of the connections are for all the safety interlocks for the doors as well the other interesting thing was that on my saw on the power input to the saw where you disconnect for the for the cable going to your your sort of final power source there was this block here that had power wires kind of a going to each terminal and then back to this block. I'm not sure what this thing is, but uh, I think I'm gonna be able to remove it on my saw because it's included in here on this main starter. This is the, the block. Uh, so it went to ground and then went to all three phases of the three phase. And this wasn't in the starter, this is actually in the sort of disconnect box at the back of the saw uh, where, you'd, uh, where power is feeding the disconnect switch from. And so it linked to all three phases and then also to ground and went to here. 
this block looks all very similar to this guy right here that basically does the same thing. So quite, uh, quite interesting. Not sure exactly what that is. If you know, please put it in the comment section below. Got the piece of cable cut that will be going from our safety disconnect box and into sort of the junction box for the uh, cord that's going to go to the wall. So I did cut this extra long. I always like to give myself a little extra slack there compared to the original. And then you can see this one is, is much thinner gauge than this guy here. So again, going from three phase to two phase or the uh, or single phase, depending on how, how you want to look at it. But uh, we just got the two power wires in the ground on this guy versus three power wires and ground on this guy here. And then again, stepping up to our uh, 10 gauge 600 volt rated cable. I've got the new cables here going into the original three phase safety disconnect switch. So I did have to upgrade the cable grabs here because the cables going into them are slightly larger with the lower gauge wire. And then I'm just using two of the connection points here rather than three that would have been used initially as we're going from three phase to two phase. You just need to make sure that top and bottom you're using the same connection points. I've remounted the safety disconnect switch here. So we've got this now operational again there. And then I've also started to do the safety interlock switches. So this guy right here, which looked like this originally on the old one. And so there is a little L bracket on this that you'll have to take off that allows this to mount in there like so. Now just some tips on these switches. You will see witness marks from the previous L bracket and where they were installed previously sort of on the paint. I would suggest lining those up starting there. And you wanna make sure that this disengages before it touches this. And that when you are closing the door, that you hear that click. So if you're hearing that click, that means that you're making the proper contact. So that might require a little bit of adjustment. Up here, I've gotten this plug all routed up through the factory location. Now remember this grommet, you'll have to remove in order to get this connector through. And then you can pry that connector or this grommet open to allow you to clear this larger plug here without damaging it. So it will not fit through the hole with the grommet installed. Then you got this little uh, sort of cable keeper that you gotta do up back up here with these two screws. And then just make sure that you pull this back so that the cables here are not interfering with your stop and uh, start button here. This installed and the grommet back in place, we can reinstall the cover. Let's note here that uh, of all of the screws that secure this panel on, the two short screws go here and here, and then you've got long screws in these five spots. Now, I originally did have the starter mounted on the back here, on this back wall, but the actual power cord for the motor that comes out of the starter and then up into the back of this guy here, that was not long enough to go there and still have all of the full up and down and tilt motion. So what I had to do is actually mount it here. Now I've got this sort of loosely secured right now, but in this position here, it will follow the whole range of motion up and down with the saw, right? So this motor here does go up and down. Right now it's in its upward most position. And then also with the tilt, it comes towards the camera as well. It just was not nearly long enough if I were to mount it to the back wall. I do have everything else connected in here, so it's a little hard to see, but I got the, all of the momentary switches all set up here, and here's the door switch on the back here. So everything is connected and ready to go. The only thing that's left to do is 
connect this guy to power on the outside right there. So it's the next day and the first start uh, did not go as planned and I didn't get the saw started. And I was kind of scratching my head on what was going on. Now there is a red and green light on the controls here by the switch. And so that's supposed to give you some error codes. Now what I was doing is I was misinterpreting that code, thinking that it was talking about the brake not being close enough to the blade and not sensing it. Now I did put a freshly sharpened blade on here and I had all of this wax on it. And so I thought that was initially throwing it off. I played around with the adjustment of that brake and removed all of the, uh, the wax that was on the blade thinking that was the issue. Now the fault that I was trying to chase was a solid red and a fast blinking green. Now that isn't actually on the side of the display and I misinterpreted that as a solid red and a slow blinking green, which is the brake. So I was playing around with the brake and removing this when really I needed to look elsewhere. If you've got a solid red and a fast blinking green like I had, it's talking about one of the door switches not being activated. So what happened was actually the back door where the saw motor pivots into was actually not being triggered. This one actually had the cable coming down the bottom and this sort of 180 degrees. So this portion of the switch was actually down here. And so is not making contact with this bracket. So once I was able to realize that, I was able to undo these two screws, flip it, put this on the upper position, and now it's making contact with that. So once I was able to get that switch to make contact when the door was closed, then we've got a situation here where we can power up the saw. So it will go green and then flashing red while initializing. And after a moment here, we will be able to start the saw. And we got a saw that runs. Overall, this project can probably be accomplished very easily in a weekend. If you had one solid day to run through it start to finish, you could absolutely do the conversion from three phase to single phase on one of these saw stop saws. Now again, if you read elsewhere, there's probably ways that you can do this with a phase converter, either a rotary phase converter or a VFD. And you can probably do that for a little bit less money than going out and buying all the parts from SawStop. I, however, would not recommend this for anyone outside of being an electrician because to make sure that all of the safety features are gonna work 100% properly the first time is gonna be a little bit tricky. And I didn't feel like going down that route and then trying to actually test it and activate the safety mechanisms to ensure that everything was working with my somewhat cobbled together solution for converting my single phase power from my shop to three phase to power the saw. Now, although it's a little bit more expensive probably to go this route in getting all the factory parts from saw stop, you are ending up with a saw that's got a brand new motor and a brand new starter in it. You've got all of those features, you know, recapitalizing or reinvesting into your saw. So this thing should be good for many, many years to come and will far outlast my use in the shop. I hope this is really helpful in considering whether to purchase a three phase saw on the used market. Personally, I think this is probably one of the best ways to go. You're gonna get the best bang for your buck and converting it really isn't that hard. If this video is helpful. Please consider subscribing and we'll see you in the next one.